This is KTEX's News at 10. It's Super Tuesday. Voters across the big country casting their ballots today. And tonight we have special coverage and some results of several key races here in the big country. Good evening and thanks for watching KTEX's News at 10 tonight. I'm Will Jensen. And I'm Farrah Walton. Tonight we'll be joined by political analyst Dr. Paul Fabrizio. Dr. Fabrizio will give us context to results in several key races. We start tonight with the race for state representative for District 71. Incumbent Stan Lambert has won tonight. He's running for his fifth term. Liz Case was challenging him. Case is a former public school teacher and faced criticism by some, saying she moved here from Dallas to run for this race. She was endorsed by former President Trump, Governor Abbott, and Attorney General Ken Paxton. Both candidates spent a lot of money on political ads. And Stan Lambert, like Will just said, the winner of this race with 53% of the votes, that was against Liz Case, who received 47%. Lambert will face Democrat Linda Goolsby in the general election. NK Texas reporter Alejandra Puente joins us live now from downtown Abilene with Stan Lambert tonight. That's right, I'm here in downtown Abilene, and like you guys just said, it was a tight race against two uh, different candidates. You had Liz Case coming in from the Metroplex, having that residency controversy, and while you had incumbent Stan Lambert trying to keep his seat once again, and like you guys had mentioned, it was a big win for him. First off, congratulations on your big win. You. Um, you just found out just a couple of minutes that you won. What are some of your initial thoughts? Well, I'm just very grateful. I'm very humbled and honored to, to be the, the primary representative in the general election in November and uh, just uh, want to thank everybody who came out and voted both in the early voting period as well as today during the election day. So just very grateful, very humbled, very honored. Yeah, well, um, you know, what do you think about now taking back to Austin now that you have your seat back again, you have your city's uh, support and all that? Well, I've still got an election in November, the general election, uh, so that'll determine who actually does represent uh, House District 71. But uh, we feel very good, very confident that uh, the message we tried to portray uh, which we took the high road and we wanted to be very confident about our record, about what we've done, what we've accomplished, and I think that uh, resonated with the voters. Well, uh, Stan Lambert will continue to celebrate his win here at Cypress Street along with his supporters. Back to you guys. Alejandra Puente live with the winner, Stan Lambert tonight. Alejandra, thank you. Dr. Paul Fabrizio joins us now. He's a political science professor at McMurray University. The race for House District 71 got a lot of attention, as we all know, all those ads, the mailers, those text messages going out. Your thoughts on Lambert coming out on top tonight? Well, I think what it shows is the power of being the incumbent, number one, and being so connected locally. He made a big deal about the fact that Liz Case was from Dallas and that she did not represent the people here. And that seemed to have carried the day today. And also, he's going to go to Austin as the state representative for this area in probably a more powerful position because he beat back the governor and the attorney general. They supported his opponent. He won. That shows that he has good connection with this district and that will help him try to get stuff passed through the legislature next session. Definitely a big win for Lambert tonight. Very big win. Dr. Fabrizio, thank you. Well, the House District 71 race has gained a lot of attention, no doubt. Another race at the forefront is the race for Taylor County Sheriff. Let's take a look at that now. And it appears that incumbent Sheriff Ricky Bishop is on his way to a re-election. Well, let's go to K-Texas reporter Karina Hollingsworth first, who is there with Rick, um, Sheriff Ricky Bishop, who is the winner of this race. Karina. Now, I'm, I'm here with Taylor County Sheriff Ricky Bishop, who we've just heard that you've been crowned the winner of this election. So given that news, um, we were, th this is your news we were, you're receiving live on TV. How are you feeling? Uh, it feels great. You know, lots of support from the county and, and all the citizens and, and words can't express how grateful I am. And now what are some of your top priorities? Uh, continue our mission and adding more patrolmen to the streets and trying to continue to increase salaries to be more competitive and increasing the technology so we can uh, better serve the citizens. 
And when we last spoke, you expressed concern about Taylor County being a fast growing county and it's growing faster than the sheriff's office. So how do you plan to keep this county safe? I'm gonna keep trying to work with the commissioners to, to add more patrolmen and more detectives where we need to so we can investigate crimes like we need to and uh, uh, just keep fighting for not only the people that work for me, but for the citizens of the county. And what message do you have to all of your supporters? Uh, I just appreciate all the support, the no donations, uh, words of encouragement, everything that's happened. And, and like I said, it's words can't express how grateful I am for to the public for uh, getting us back into office. Well, thank you, Sheriff Fish. Okay, and stay tuned into K-Texas News. Thank you for watching K-Texas. I'm Karina Hollingsworth, live in Butte. All right, Karina, thank you. Karina live for us with Sheriff Ricky Bishop, the winner for his race tonight. We want to take a look at those results of uh, this race here so you can see how it all came down. Uh, Ricky Bishop was 77% of the vote compared to uh, his opponents there, not really getting close to him. We want to go now to Dr. Paul Fabrizio, who joins us with some uh, reflection on this race. What are your thoughts? Yeah, that was a very solid race for the incumbent. Again, the incumbent wins again. Right. And that might be the theme for tonight. But uh, uh, Sheriff Ricky Bishop beat back the two challengers who said there was problems in the sheriff's office and he seemed to handle it. And that race, as we talked about earlier tonight, sort of petered out as this election season went on as more attention was focused on this, the state representative race. And I think Ricky Bishop benefited from less attention on the sheriff's race. And just as the incumbent, he won. Yeah, the incumbents winning their races tonight here yes, they in are. Taylor County. Yes, they Dr. are. Dr. Fabrizio, thank you. We will have a little bit more with him later. But now we want to go to K Texas Chief Meteorologist Mark Rowlett with a first look at our forecast. We had quiet weather for Election Day, and it's still quiet with fair skies and temperatures are dropping into the 50s behind that nice north wind that we had to cool most of us off today. 58 at last check in Abilene. We've just got high clouds passing mainly to our south, but things are going to change in a hurry tomorrow. We have a risk of some isolated severe storms beginning about 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And you see Abilene, San Angelo, Brownwood over to Eastman, all the way over to the Metroplex under a marginal risk for severe storms. I would think large hail would be our main concern with late day thunderstorms for tomorrow. Now temperatures are going to be cool tonight, low to mid 40s. We'll look for highs tomorrow getting into the upper 70s. More about our forecast coming up. Thank you, Mark. Now let's take a look at the race for U.S. Representative for District 19. Incumbent Jody Arrington has represented our area since 2017. He's the fifth person to represent the 19th Congressional District, and we have declared him the winner. He did not face a Democratic challenger in the general election, so he has been reelected tonight and he won by a large margin. He really did and Dr. Fabrizio this was an easy win you can say. Oh it was a very easy win. He had two challengers but I don't think they ever had the money that would be necessary to challenge him. Uh, again the incumbent wins again and this district goes all the way up to Lubbock all the way down here huge territory to cover and uh, Jody Arrington who's well connected with his communities again shows the power of incumbency again and again. I think that's a theme for tonight in these elections. Yes, it certainly appears so, and you can see those results there. Arrington, Congressman Arrington winning by 83% there. We are covering the race for state representative for District 72 when we come back. And coming up on KTEX's News at 10. I'm Atrell Nashar with the results in some major states voting this Super Tuesday. Coming up, how the night is shaping up for Joe Biden, Donald Trump, and Nikki Haley. And coming up in sports, there was a crosstown rivalry on the diamond tonight. We'll have that final score between Abilene and Wiley later, so stay with us. Getting the facts right and alerting you to weather danger. You're watching KTEX's News at 10 with Will Jensen. Farrell Walton, your storm alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Mark Rowley and sports with Sierra Henry.
Welcome back. We go now to the race for state representative for District 72. Incumbent Drew Darby represents 10 counties in West Texas, including the Tom Green County area. He was first elected for this position in 2006, and challenger Stormy Bradley is a business owner and sixth generation Texan. And taking a look at those results there, incumbent Darby in the lead with 58%. Stormy Bradley, 42%, and that is with 89% reporting. Now to the race for senator on the Republican side with a sweeping win by Ted Cruz, winning the vote with 88% of that vote. That's with 67% reporting. That's to his opponent's 6%. Now let's go to the Democratic side for Senate. Colin Allred in the lead, a big lead there. He's a congressman out of Dallas and a former player for the NFL. State Senator Roland Gutierrez represents the San Antonio area where he was born and raised. And as you can see there, Colin Allred, like we said, a big lead with 60% of the vote. The winner there will face Ted Cruz in the general election. Cruz, the incumbent, has represented Texas in the Senate since 2013. Dr. Fabrizio joins us again. What are, you, are your thoughts on what looks like a Cruz Allred matchup? Well, we got to remember that most Republicans consider Ted Cruz to be the most vulnerable senator this year. When he ran last time against Beto O'Rourke, he only won by 3% of the vote. So there is a lot of attention that's going to be focused on this. And the question is, could Colin Allred step up to the challenge of beating an incumbent Republican senator in a Republican state? And as we saw, Colin Allred, I think, got 60% of the vote. There were 12 candidates in that race, so he actually did very well to avoid a runoff. I mean, it's a solid showing by Allred, but he's got a much more difficult challenge ahead of him. Definitely, we'll see what happens, what the results are later on. All right, Mark joins us now with our full forecast. From the Taylor Telecom Weather Center, your storm alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Mark Rowlett. Good evening again, everyone. It was a cooler day than yesterday, but we were still above normal on that high temperature by 8 degrees. Our low this morning was a chilly 44, just 2 degrees above normal. We are still looking at fair skies, and we'll hold on to those for tonight, but things are going to change in a hurry during the day tomorrow. So it's fair and mild tonight, increasing clouds with a chance of isolated thunderstorms late tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening. We'll look at some showers for Thursday morning with a chance of thunderstorms thunderstorms again for Thursday night. Here just those high clouds passing to our south right now. It's generally fair here in the big country and we are looking at some stronger upper level winds and the front that moved through the cold front that brought us the little bit of a cool down today. It retreats back through our area tomorrow as a warm front and there's a boundary that thunderstorms will likely form upon late tomorrow afternoon. And we do have that marginal risk, the lowest of the five categories, but nevertheless a risk for severe storms that could produce large hail damaging winds. But I'm really thinking large hail will be the main culprit with any severe storms tomorrow. But again, it's quiet for tonight. Things change tomorrow. 45 at 7 a.m. It's 68 at lunchtime. Scattered thunderstorms already around at 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon with a temperature of 75. High clouds at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. No issues going to work and school. Here we are at 5 o'clock and then thunderstorms pop up about 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon south of Abilene here between Abilene and San Angelo and those kind of move off to the northeast. Here's another batch of showers, not so much storms, but rain and thunder at midnight going into Thursday morning. And then we're looking at another wave of showers possible at 7 a.m on Thursday morning. Then a lot of that is still just some light rain at lunchtime on Thursday, moves out Thursday afternoon, but then isolated thunder showers start popping up five o'clock Thursday afternoon. Then we'll have a Pacific cold front move through between midnight and sunrise Friday. That will scare up some showers and thunderstorms, maybe not severe, but still some more rain. So you see several rounds of rain moving through our area beginning tomorrow afternoon. Here's a cold front that will move in Friday afternoon to open the door to some chilly temperatures for Friday night and Saturday into Sunday. 42 up in Amarillo, it's 70 in Brownsville. We're on the cool side of things with temperatures in the 50s. 55 in Brownwood and Coleman, it's 58 in Abilene with northeast winds at 5. 
44 tomorrow morning going up to 78 tomorrow afternoon, but watch out for those isolated late day thunderstorms. Shower thunderstorms on Thursday, 75 down to 66 and windy Friday, 56 Saturday, 66 Sunday, then 70s. Cooling off for the weekend, Mark, thank you. Back to election coverage across the nation this time. President Biden and former President Trump quickly racking up more delegates on, the, on this Super Tuesday. Their victories in key states are bringing us closer to an early start to the general election. National correspondent Atra El Nishar has the latest on this tonight from Washington. The votes are coming in and it is becoming clearer and clearer that voters are likely going to see a rematch of 2020 this November. President Biden and former President Trump absolutely running away with their party's delegates. For Republicans tonight, 854 delegates are up for grabs. Trump started the night with 273 compared to Nikki Haley's 43. And by all accounts, the Trump campaign is having a good night. He's projected to win just about every state so far. Now, he he won't get to the 1,215 needed to secure the GOP nomination, but he is certainly expected to get very close. For Nikki Haley, the states where she could have done well, some of her best chances at a victory just aren't panning out the way her campaign would like to. Take Virginia. It's got an open primary, meaning Democrats and independents could vote in the Republican primary if they'd like to. That's projected to go to Trump by a almost 30 points. Uh, also, Vermont, again, an open primary, a more moderate electorate. That one is still pretty close, too close to call. It may be her best shot at walking away with the state tonight. Now, so far, the biggest prizes, Texas, 161 delegates, North Carolina, 74 delegates, both projected to go to Donald Trump. So now we look to California on the West Coast with a whopping 169 delegates up for grabs. On Capitol Hill, I'm Atral Nishar. Well, it looks like Nikki Haley is out. Dr. Paul Fabrizio, what are your thoughts on another rematch between President Biden and former President Trump? You know, when we look at it, this is something that we talked about for the last year you know we sort of knew it was probably going to happen and now it's here Nikki Haley did win one state New Hampshire or she's very close to winning that one state but that's not gonna I mean I'm sorry Vermont but that's not gonna make much difference what we have to deal with is our two candidates for president one is 77 the other is 81 both of them have weaknesses before the American people and we the voters are confronted with a choice and which way do we want to go with that both candidates now have several months to try to demonstrate their strengths to try to de try to demonstrate why they think they should be the choices so we'll see how it goes we need to remember Donald Trump liked favored by 45 46 percent of the electorate and uh, Joe Biden by about 42 43 percent that means there's a part of the electorate that still has not made up their mind, and that's who this campaign is going to be about. And President Biden, with the big speech coming up uh, later this week on Thursday, the State of the Union, what does he need to do there? This is his one big opportunity until the conventions this summer to demonstrate that he is in command, that he is in charge, that he is of sound physical and mental health. That's what he has to demonstrate. Also, he is not trusted on the economy and on the border, so he has to come up with ways to convince the American people that he knows what he's doing and that we should trust him. That's a big assignment, but that's the job of being president and being a presidential candidate. All right, another big night on the way. We want to thank you, Dr. Fabrizio, for all of your insight, your context tonight. We really appreciate it. Yes, thank thank you. you. Thank you very much. We'll be right back. And coming up in sports, it's those Mustangs from Benjamin on the road to another state title this year. We'll hear from them when we come back.
From the Texas State Hearing Aid Device Center Sports Desk, your sports report with K-Texas Sports Director, Sierra Henry. Good evening, Big Country. Over the weekend, we had some area high school boys basketball teams compete in the regional tournament out in Snyder, but only one made it out. And that would be the Mustangs from Benjamin after coming out victorious over Eula. Winning a state football title just wasn't enough for the Mustangs. They won a basketball one, too. And with their experience in big games, they know exactly what it's going to take to come home champs again. Well, I'm, I don't know, just probably look at some pictures from last year and see the, you know, the upsetness from everybody and you know, work hard from that. I just get on the bus, read my Bible, then get here, put my shoes on, shoot, and get ready for the game. They're used to big games. It's not about getting them ready. It's just making sure we know who shooters are, who does what on that other team, and the little bitty things like that. And with basketball season wrapping up, softball slid right into district play tonight with a crosstown rivalry between Wiley and Abilene High. We got to talk to the Lady Bulldogs yesterday at their practice to get their thoughts on beginning district with a rival game. Starting district plays are always exciting, and it's tough when you open up district with familiar opponents. We have Abilene High, then we have Abilene Cooper. The fact that we're starting district off with kind of a, a rival, you know, I think that's going to help us start district on like with the right foot. I think it's exciting with good weather just to go out there and hope our preseason prepared us and make adjustments as we need to as we go, and that's what you need to do to play good softball. I'm just excited just to give it a whirl, you know. Well, the Lady Bulldogs will definitely start district off on the right foot with the win over the Eagles 3-2. to two. You're watching K-Texas News at 10. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back everyone. Fair skies will continue tonight. We rest easy with these cool temperatures, but looking ahead to tomorrow, there's a risk of isolated severe storms late tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. 45 tomorrow morning, 75 tomorrow afternoon. Unsettled weather will stay with us Thursday. Then it's windy and cooler on Friday. We want to thank you for watching our special coverage of Super Tuesday tonight. Jimmy Kimmel is next. Hope you have a great night.